up, Rams, and welcome to the final episode of Local Beats of the Semester. With this being Naomi and I's last appearances on this show, we knew we had to end it on a good note. I will have to say, this is a very bittersweet moment for us, but don't fret, we have a packed show for you tonight, kicking off with some Fort Collins industry news, where we will be giving you the rundown of everything happening here in Fort Collins in the music community. After that, Naomi and I hit the Lori Student Center to see what our fellow Rams have been listening to so far in 2022, and some older suggestions that they just can't seem to let go of. Following that, Katrina will be giving us an inside look at CSU's Symphony Orchestra and how their instructor challenges his students to create amazing musicians. And Naomi showcases one of Fort Collins' newest bands to hit the scene, Loud House, and what they are doing to get their name out there. All right here on Local Beats. <laughs> This past April, the Velveteers performed at the Aggie Theater with the openers Plasma Canvas and Cody. This was their first performance back in their home state after joining Greta Van Fleet on their Dreams and Gold Tour as special guests alongside bands such as Rival Sons and Pretty Reckless. Although the Velveteers were not here for long, after their performance at the Aggie, they joined the Smashing Pumpkins as openers for their show in San Antonio, Texas. The band is set to go back on tour with Greta Van Fleet this summer, and even hop across the pond to play a few shows in the United Kingdom. This fall, they are also set to perform with the Black Keys and Band of Horses. However, if you want to catch them live this summer, don't fret. They'll be performing in Fort Collins one more time at Odell Small Batch Festival on the 28th of this month. This band is a busy one to say the least. I'm excited to see what their future holds and how they are placing Fort Collins on the map for up-and-coming musicians. With April being Local Musician Appreciation Month, the Fort Collins Music Experiment, or FOCO MX, brought back their annual two-day music festival to showcase northern Colorado talent in downtown Fort Collins. With music, with music venues such as the Aggie Theater, the Lyric, the Atrium, the Coast, and many more participating in the event, over 300 artists perform within the two-day time span. Many of the bands we have showcased here on Local Beats performed as well, such as Julia Kirkwood, Costanza, Lady Denham, Graham Good and the Painters, Cactus Cat, and Taylor Shea, just to name a few. The festival has been going on for 14 years and counting after taking a small hiatus the past two years due to COVID restrictions. This year, the musicians and music lovers really showed up and showed out, truly earning them their, official unof their unofficial title as the biggest little festival in America. With Mother's Day being just around the corner, the Rock and Roll Playhouse announced that they will be doing a special run of shows to celebrate mothers this weekend. This Sunday at 11 a.m., the Coast will be hosting the event in Fort Collins as a place for families to rock out to the classics. The Rock and Roll Playhouse was founded in, in 2013 in Brooklyn, New York, and plays music of art classic artists such as the Beatles to provide a space for children and parents to bond over the sound of music. Their goal is to create opportunities for families to experience live music together in historic venues. This Sunday, a host of venues will be participating in the event nationwide, including our very own. The event is meant to celebrate the amazing women who raise us, whether moms, grandmothers, or aunts, to let them know we love and appreciate them. And if you're looking for something to do this summer, the Taste of Fort Collins will be returning for its 26th year this June with headliners T.I. and Collective Soul. In the the in-person event that is hosted by Town Square Media sold out last year after taking a break in 2020 due to COVID. Headliners Nelly and the Spin Doctors performed at the food festival alongside local artists, while the event showcased dozens of local restaurants, food trucks, and distilleries. This year, the event was scheduled to be the weekend of June 11th and June 12th at Washington Park. If there was one event that Fort Collins was most known for in the summer, it has to be the Bohemian Nights New West Fest. After 15 years of New West Fest bringing Fort Collins music community together, the organizers of the Bohemian Nights Festival confirmed last year that it was discontinued after struggling through the COVID-19 pandemic. When they originally announced the discontinuation of the festival, the foundation claimed that they were looking for new ways to build the community through music. Now we have to look no further. The event is now being replaced by Thursday Night Live, a free musical event in partnership with the new Belgium Brewing Company in Old Town Fort Collins each Thursday, starting June 3rd and going until August 5th. I'm excited to see what this new event will bring to the Fort Collins community. 
And if you're still looking for more mu music events this, to attend this summer, there's an abundance of live events that will be taking place, even on our very own campus. The Lagoon Concert Series will be celebrating 25 years of live music at the Lagoon, located on CSU's campus this summer. Spanning from the 15th of June to the 25th of July, they will be holding free concerts open to the public on Wednesday nights. The event has been celebrated in Northern Colorado tradition for many years now. Mantooth Marketing will be partnering with CSU along with the help of many other local businesses in order to make the event possible. So grab a blanket, claim a spot, and enjoy headliners such as Funky Business, Nothing But 90s, Ryan Chris and the Rough Cuts, Christine Alice, and many more. Well, Rams, that is all the upcoming industry news in Fort Collins we have for you today. But as you can see, there are a ton of events happening this summer. After the break, Katrina and I will be showing you what students' favorite songs from 2022 are, so stay tuned. Living with someone you don't know on the other side of the wall is hard, especially if you don't know how to be a good roommate. The first thing that you'll want to do to be a good roommate is make sure that you always stay quiet. Be considerate of others when using common spaces and appliances. Hey buddy, what you doing? I'm just gonna need like 40 minutes. Be respectful of your roommate's privacy. Ugh, my bad. Finally, make sure that you clean up after yourself. Oh, fresh toothbrush. Have you seen my toothbrush? Follow these tips to get along with your roommates and your landlord. Welcome back from the break rams. Last month seemed to be booming with new music releases. And since we have our very own new music recommendations segment here on our show, Naomi and I wanted to ask our fellow rams what their favorite new music recs from 2022 are, and for some, 2021. What is up, Rams? Welcome back to the final episode of Beats on the Street. I'm Naomi Homer. And I'm Katrina Leiby. And today we are asking our fellow Rams what their new music rec is. I'll go with uh, Make of It by Half Alive. Why do you like that one? It's just got a really cool, like, upbeat to it. And I don't know, it just gets me in a good mood. Mm -hmm. so. I like Sad Disco by MXM Tune. She finds herself in the house alone. It's her own sad disco. Yeah? Yeah. And why is that one? I don't know. I just really like her style of music. It's super laid back and stuff like that. So it's just kind of music to study to. I honestly. like that. Yeah. I like a good study song. Lonely by Taeyong is really, really, really good. But I don't know. I'm so lonely. I'm in turmoil and ain't nobody. Like if you're barely wanting to start getting into K-pop, that's like that'd like be like a good way. introduction. Yeah. So okay. It's like a very like happy. I'll like, just check it vibes. out. Yeah. You got jokes by contrast. You got jokes. Go to stop my problem. Okay. And why do you like that one? I don't know. I like the beat. That's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. um, probably walk in by Denzel Curry. The same old story in a whole different era. I'm watching massacres turn to run the mascara. But anywho, for the pain, okay, cool. Is, yeah, he really said this here. It was really, really a song. <laughs> and why that song? Um, I don't know. It was just like the beat, I guess. And then I saw him in concert, which definitely um, add, yep. added to like why I like it. But I can see why. <laughs> it was a good one. I, I don't know. The album was cool. Okay, I'll just go with First Class, since it came out, like, I think, like, this month or last month or something. Mm -hmm. Throw up the sex in a... Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I just like a lot of old songs. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. from last year and stuff. But, yeah. Play that song. I'm gonna have to say Scars by Baby Keem. I ask God. Okay, why? Um, I don't know. It's upbeat and it's fun. I like the beat of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll go with the basic answer, the motto by the Tiesto. Motto. 
Okay. <laughs> it's a good song right it's now. It's one. a bop. So, yeah. What is your favorite song that's come out in 2022? Ooh. Probably, it's called Puzzle Box, and it's by Rez and Subtronics. But I'm a big EDM fan. What about you? <laughs> oh gosh, probably, I don't know, maybe? First, the class. first class, yeah, we've been getting that a <laughs> lot. Um, why do you like that song? Oh, I just love Rez. Rez is probably my favorite artist, mm -hmm. and Subtronics is huge. I'm seeing him in concert in two days. Cool. So, I just love the artist and love the genre. Awesome. <laughs> I thought that it was so funny that when she asked me what my favorite was, I couldn't even oh my say, because we were like <laughs> asking them, asking so many people the same question over and over, and I didn't even know the answer. No, it's not every day we get it. We get the script flipped on us, and they're like, oh, so what's yours? And I you're know, like, I don't think that's ever happened. I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah. Have you have you decided is it still first class by Jack Harlow? I mm, I another answer we got a lot was as it was by Harry Styles, but I didn't put any of those in there. Yeah. But I think I like that one a lot too. But it's being overused on TikTok, I will say that. <laughs> I feel like a lot of them are getting a little overused. Yeah. I don't even think I could name my favorite. <laughs> just cuz I mean with the segment we have here on Beats, it's just like I find them every single month and then I then know. I have a new one every right? single month. So <laughs> scene, we get to say three too, so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, speaking of good music, don't go away just yet. After the break, Katrina heads to Griffin Hall to get an inside look at the CSU Orchestra. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back. For our last show, I wanted to learn about some music we don't usually cover here on Local Beats. I went to the CSU Symphony's rehearsal to hear from the maestro, the musicians, and to find out what makes CSU's orchestra so special. On April 21st, I had the privilege of listening in on the CSU Symphony's practice for their concert that was May 5th. Maestro Wes Kenny has been conducting the orchestra for 19 years and is always challenging the students to play difficult pieces that you might see in a professional orchestra. You know, when I first got here, I mean, we had some good ensembles, but, you know, my desire was to teach students who play in the orchestra what it was going to be like when they entered the real world workforce as a musician. And that meant, for example, just the rehearsal period. When I first got here, the orchestra met twice a week for an hour and 15 minutes. Now we meet twice a week for two and a half hours. And why two and a half hours? Because that's the standard length of, of a professional orchestra service. And so they had to kind of build up the endurance. You know, that's what's been happening over the course of the last 19 years is that they've, the ensemble has grown and grown. And so we've done a lot of pieces that have never been performed before at CSU. Stravinsky's Rite of Spring is an iconic piece. Um, we've done that. We've done three Mahler symphonies. We've done Bruckner symphonies. We've done all of the Brahms symphonies, not to mention a whole bunch of premieres and contemporary music. We have played full-length operas. You know, for a lot of students, when they come to CSU, they've never played anything longer than about 20 minutes. And to sit down in an orchestra pit and do, let's say, a three-hour Mozart opera, I mean, this is going to make people a better musician and have far greater concentration abilities than they've had before. I think 
He definitely really challenges us. Um, he, he's very direct about it and really pushes us to the next level. Because um, I think as college students, sometimes we have so many things going on that this sometimes is on, or orchestra sometimes on the back burner, but um, he kind of pushes us to bring it to a more professional level so that we can leave here and continue playing. Well, I think one of the things that you discover, and, and I actually discovered this a long time ago, but you always have to instill it into the ensembles, and that is never leave something short. Um, the students will always rise to the occasion if you know how to teach them certain facets about the music. I really like Maestro Kenny's take on the orchestra experience in college because he's really intentional about selecting music that will be uh, relevant when you become a professional in the music field. So he's selecting music that professional orchestras play and music that often has really famous excerpts for each instrument that is often used in audition repertoire for in order to audition for these professional music ensembles. Some of them says, hey, you know, I never knew how to concentrate before. You know, I came and played with the CSU Symphony. Or I never understood what the depth of emotion in music was before I came to CSU and started playing some of this great stuff, you know, that, you know, has, you know, an emotional impact that they simply had not understood. It runs the gamut of what the human experience is. I mean, music will show us anger and joy, sorrow and excitement. I always think that one of the best experiences for a conductor is working with an ensemble who is experiencing something for the first time and when they get it what that means. Absolutely they would say that that we challenge them. You know I have uh, somebody actually <laughs> spent a, uh, a year in the orchestra and was writing down quotes from me and I, I have it on my wall in my office and one of them was where I told the orchestras, I'm not interested in the music that you think you can play, I'm interested in the music that you thought you never could play. I'm not gonna lie, Katrina, I was very jealous that you were able to go see these guys and watch them rehearse, um, just like outside of an actual concert. I'm. Something I feel like most people don't really know about me is that I used to be in an orchestra for like a lot of years and it was a big part of my life for a long time. So it's just really nice to see us like showcasing that here on our show because it's something I hold really close to my heart. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was really cool to go there. I've like never actually been in the UCA, I've gone to school at CSU for four years and <laughs> I've been in there. It was really cool and I, it was like my sister w played violin um, from like kindergarten all through high school, and so I was going to her concerts for like mm -hmm. so long, and so it brought back memories. It's for very me nostalgic. Too. Yeah. yeah. Well, breaking out into the m new music industry is also not an easy task, but for this local up and coming band, they have found a new way to do so, starting out by quite literally cranking the music volume up at home. After playing a few house shows, which also rings true to their name, the band just came out with their new single, Blow Up My Life and plan to take Foco music scene by storm. Loud House has just stemmed from when we play and we're rehearsing. Like the neighbors are like, please turn it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I am a singer and songwriter sometimes, and I play piano. I'm Ethan, I play drums. We have Carson, and he does a lot of our producing work, and he also plays guitar. And Michael plays guitar and does vocals, and then Kyle is our bassist. Loud House started pretty recently, probably four months ago, and then we played our first show um, about a month ago. When we made our name, the Loud House, like when we rehearse, we are like we're playing our music full blast, we're just like really getting into it and we feel like because we're loud we can cater to so many different audiences. And Our roots come from just like Jan and, and Carson and Michael yeah. and, and Kyle's house. The whole house is just loud, you can hear it from 
every corner. And I think bringing that into a house party setting for us is just like so fulfilling because it's like everybody there kind of gets to feel what we're feeling. Well, the song we just released, Blow Up My Life, definitely has more of like a modern rock feel, but then we're also working on this song. It's kind of like more edgy, and then we also have some like EDM songs, so we're kind of just all over the place at the moment. We definitely are in the process yeah. of finding our sound. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to take a while. It's so fun because we're all so different in terms of what kind of music we like and what kind of music we want to play, and then when we come together with the five of us, it's, there's just like a lot of potential. Definitely want to start playing more gigs, getting more people to hear our music, connecting with like a wider audience. Fort Collins area is like perfect place to like start out. I mean, there's so many great venues. I, I really want to play at the Aggie. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, right so. now we are looking at trying to get in the Aggie. So we have a lot of house parties that we want to play at. Um, we're gonna work on making a music video. We're releasing a couple songs this summer, which we're excited about, and kind of just start getting the ball rolling. We just released our first song and kind of just keep that upward trajectory. Right now, it's just a great time no matter where we play. Yeah. We just have so much fun playing together that we could be playing in front of nobody and we're still just like, like just like this high of <laughs> just like, ah, this is awesome. <laughs> Well, I didn't go with you to see Loud House, but I want to know, how loud was their actual house? <laughs> well, you know, this is the interesting part, is I actually wasn't able to be there to film them perform, oh. but I did get all their footage, and I will let you know that listening to that with headphones on was not a good idea. <laughs> it was very loud, but I thought it was just such an interesting mixture of like all kinds of different music genres like they talked about. They had like EDM, and then they had a bunch of covers. They did some like Kanye, but then also like uptown funk it was just like a whole genre like a yeah. whole mixture of genres yeah so many bands in fort collins get their start by just playing house shows so mm -hmm. i think it's interesting that they kind of like made their name literally yeah. about like like house loud house show. yeah yeah i thought that was interesting because you know they talk about how they always crank up the volume and then they're also playing these house shows it just seems so fitting to their name yeah for sure <laughs> Uh, while Naomi and I love blasting the tunes, I find most of my music while listening to my headphones on my walk to class. Stick around because after the break, we'll be giving you our final new music recs of the semester. Awkward. Do I look familiar? I should. You might remember me from here. Here. We, we or maybe even here. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. It can actually be a perfect moment to reach out to a friend and ask if they're okay, if they seem down. It doesn't matter how you say it. You all right? Everything's okay? Oh, gee. You all right, girl? Oh, you cool? You bug and dog. Just show you're there for them. Go on, Kelly. See the awkward. Hey, um... You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with the awkward.org. Welcome back from the break, Rams. Tonight, Katrina and I will be leaving you some new music to jam out to all summer long. We have some of our favorite new music releases from this month. My first recommendation actually came out today, and it's This Love, Taylor's Version by Taylor Swift. Miss Swift herself has been giving us those re-records, so of course I'm going to re recommend this one from the 1989 album. This love is good, this love is bad, this love is a light back from the day. Oh. Can't believe I was lucky enough to have Taylor Swift release a song in time for me to do <laughs> a music record. <laughs> yeah, literally today. Honestly, I, I've never heard that one before, so it's, it's new to me. I'll listen to 1989. Then. I will have to. <laughs> For my first pick, I had to go with Caution by Kuko. It's a bit different from the music I usually listen to, but the energy I get from this song is unmatched. Yeah, so this usually isn't my genre that I get into, but like, I don't know, it's like the way that he sings his lyrics and it's really kind of fast paced, like puts me in like, like I want to do things fast when I listen to it. You I want to I mean? do things <laughs> fast. I feel like you could like clean something listening Just like to really that. Quickly. Really fast. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, for my next pick, I'm sticking with an artist I recommended last time. Not Like I'm In Love With You by Lauren Weintraub has been on repeat for me, and it's one I'm always blasting in the car lately. Started slow, but then like dominoes, I started free, falling for you, no control, I couldn't if you want to know where I get most of my song recs, it's from TikTok. I'm serious. <laughs> I found this girl on TikTok and I have loved like all of her songs, Sash. Uh, my final pick is Memories by Conan Gray. The chorus in this song is what gets me and it takes you by surprise and it's really filled with emotions. Yeah, I heard that. I think I saw the music video for this song first, and that chorus mm -hmm. is just like comes in with the electric guitar and really just like takes you by surprise. Oh, that's awesome! I liked how the music video looked like it was sheet music. It's very mm -hmm. in tune with that's what like you the just lyric covered. video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, for my final suggestion, I went with "Lavender Lemonade" by Ger Garen Sean. This is such a nice EDM esque song, which I personally think is the best genre to listen to in the summer. Lavender lemonade weather Old fashioned light of the color I don't always listen to EDM music, but I really like it when I can find something and it instantly catches my ear. I thought this one was just so chill and it just really had like the kind of summer vibe that I'm always liking like chasing in the summertime. Yeah, I am getting a summery, like relaxed vibe mm -hmm. from that song, so <laughs> Uh, well, Rams, it looks like that is all we have for you tonight. As always, check out our Spotify playlist linked in the description of our show to listen to all the music featured on tonight's show. With this being both Naomi and I's last show, we would like to say a few words to the people who have helped us along the way. This semester went by so fast. I remember thinking four shows was going to be really hard to create. But Naomi and our entertainment director, Hattie, made it so fun, and I'm grateful I got to do this. I'm going to miss working with Naomi to find ideas for the show, filming and editing the stories of amazing people, and even standing on the plaza asking random people about their favorite songs, just to get way more no's than yeses. <laughs> Thank you, CTV, for giving me this incredible opportunity. It truly is a bittersweet moment. My time producing and anchoring on Local Beats has been one of my favorite parts of my college experience. Being able to meet such talented arti artists and share their stories while working with such an incredible team of people at both CTV and Rocky Mountain, Studio Medi Rocky Mountain Student Media has been unparalleled. I would like to thank Katrina for being a stellar co-host with me this semester and everyone at CTV for making my visions for this show come to life. Now for the last time, I'm your host, Naomi Homer. And I'm your host, Katrina Leiby. Stay safe and have a good night, Rams.